In our original 2009 Antarctic, Antarctic Climate Change and the Environment Report, we identified certain key factors we felt were important in climate change in the Antarctic, such as the importance of the ozone hole, since it developed in about 1980, increasing greenhouse gases, and also the large natural variability of the system. But Antarctic science moves very fast, and uh, by the time we got to late 2012, we felt that it was appropriate to have an update to uh, identify the, the key advances since our original report. So we've produced a, 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 an update of the key points, almost 100 key points uh, that were appearing in our original report. And uh, some of these are still valid. Some of the, the science really hasn't changed a lot, but other areas were moving very rapidly. Uh, particular factors would be things like the, uh, the big ongoing debate about whether the Antarctic ice sheet is growing or shrinking. And we have various tools to look at this. We can use altimeters on satellites that measure the height of the Antarctic. There are gravity missions which measure the gravitational pull from the Antarctic ice sheet, which allow us to estimate whether the Antarctic is growing or shrinking. And recently there's been a consensus on this, and so we think that's a key advance. And now we know that West Antarctica is contributing significantly to uh, increasing sea level rise. And the Pine Island area of West Antarctica is contributing about 10% to global sea level rise, which is overall about 3 millimetres per year. So the fact that we had a, an ACC update allowed us to bring many of the uh, rapidly advancing topics of Antarctic science up to date and uh, produce a, a handy summary for people who want to know the latest advances in the science.